basically the drone has this thing called um, obstacle avoidance and whenever it goes near an object it won't let it go near it um, because obviously it doesn't want to crash into it. You and me, we're family. The bond that we share is as deep as the sea. No matter how rough things may come to be, you and me, we're family. Sing ho, hey, long for the ride, ho. Hey, I'll stay by your side, ho. Hey, you are... So, we flew towards the boat and, um, my dad tried to catch it and it just went up and for a second I thought he wouldn't be able to get the drone back for a second I thought it would just refuse to go on anything so um, I had to override it by pushing down as hard as I can and I knew if the obstacle avoidance run me told off that's going to go straight down into the water so I had to try and uh, take the drone down to avoid it so it would stay still and then my dad could grab it but when you grab the drone you're meant to go like that um, so it goes straight down so the propellers stop but um my dad kind of forgot that and when he did it it, it went on its side and like he was basically holding this drone with the propellers that could easily chop your fingers off going like shh everywhere so um in sports mode it turns off obstacle avoidance so maybe next time we should put it on sports mode but the only thing is it goes really fast in sports mode so it's going to be very jerky so Darok, he's so clever because he can fly that drone and he's so good at it and he's going to get better at it and he will be an expert drone flyer one day. Mum and Dad went to explore the lovely islands. Built this little kind of house restaurant bar on this little island. It's really nice. So this is Yarni Island. So this is a really cute little island and it looks like it's some kind of hostel because um, there's these little rooms with door numbers on and there's a little kind of cafe bit there. This must be the toilets and the showers. Yep, that's the showers. Very basic. We've got a whole lot more touristy, hasn't it? This, this side. Yeah. It's like a holiday inn. Hola. This is the lady that makes the molars. Wow. The Kuni Yala women make their money by selling these lovely molars. Yeah, nice. Oh, muy bien, ya pájaro. Sí, sí. We were running out of food, so it was great to see the vegetable boat come over. We even got uh, special delivery veggie boxes. Custom made up of garlic and flour and all sorts of stuff. As we've been at sea for a few weeks now and uh, we're kind of running out of a lot of stuff the kids went through this kind of flourish of activity where they were cooking all sorts of cakes and buns and biscuits and we completely run out of flour which means we ran out of bread but uh, luckily one of our friends on the other boat Mary off Chinook um, she vacuum packed a load of flour before she left the United States and has loads left over so she gave us a bag of flour so now we made a loaf of bread and we're going to take it over because I'm chief bread maker on the boat and I was talking to the other ladies and we're all having a baking sort of 
talk about what we should be doing, what we should be making, and it turns out the Chinook hasn't got a bread maker, so they haven't had bread for weeks. So with their flour and our bread maker, we're gonna take this over as a present today because we're gonna do a Skillshare thing, whereas um, we're gonna actually teach them how to edit their videos together. to Chinook and we're going to do some video editing and talk about how to make a story. It was like a business meeting with all the computers and the big computer explaining what to do. We all slice and this is finished the book. They're just playing around with these two. Yeah, real good. Everyone had a go at editing their first video and they all looked pretty good. a show on uh, the island of Big Dog apparently uh, and it's three dollars a person uh, kids are free uh, and it's very nicely manicured and owned by this family and uh, it's beautiful it's like an archetypal desert island except swept up and no bugs oh now we're here I think uh, we could go on a tour of the entire island are um, made by different colour cloth put into different layers. The molars are all different and they show different symbols and birds and animals. The molars quality depends on the design, the numbers of layers and how it's stitched. These molars were especially spectacular. And that's the tour of Big Dog Island. Now we're going to prepare it and eat it. 
I also stuffed its stomach with garlic. And now we're gonna bombard it with onions. <laughs> Tastes like them. Fish. Fish. Well, for the last few days, Darry's been catching um, fish off the back of the boat and scaling them or descaling them. Unfortunately, he hasn't had the hatch closed, so the last few mornings I've been waking up to fish scales in the bed. We've just left uh, Lemon Key, superb anchorage, really. It was shallow ground between several different islands. We've stopped halfway between there and Chichame. Apparently there's a, there's a good uh, wreck here to go snorkeling on, so we're going to take a look. Just get the car out of the garage! <laughs> there was a lot of people in the water, so I had to watch out. So we're going to dive the wreck off Dog Island. Um, it's funny because suddenly it's got really touristy. We haven't seen tourists for ages and then suddenly the island's just full of people drinking beer and having a good time. It's just kind of nice in one way. There's even people camping on the beach. So this wreck is here because um, this guy got a leak in his boat and um, rather than um, just, well basically he had a lot of rum on board and so he brought the boat as shallow as he could and let it kind of sink and he got all his um, rum off the boat so that's why this wreck is here. the wreck was really scary because if you got caught then you'd stay down there so it was a relief to get back up It was covered in fire coral and we didn't realise and so when we got back on the boat everybody was kind of like stinging like crazy. In fact Derry was in tears, it was so bad. Uh, it's probably the most commercial island we've been on in the sand blast so far. The closer we get to uh, the Panama Canal the more sort of commercial it gets. So now we're heading to Chichibe. When you're anchoring you, there's like special things you have to do. Like you, when, when you put it up you have to wait every few seconds to let the anchor settle because if you put it up too much it'll like get really tight and then maybe even break you have hand signals and you have to make it go that way or you can't put it up so you go like that because if you speak and it's very windy they can't hear you so you just have these hand signals when when you see the anchor and it's not on the floor anymore you say clear it's pretty easy but hard at the same time And 
Ewan is brilliant because he just knows how to deal with that anchor. It's kind of his little kind of area and he's really good at it. He knows what he's doing. So I'm just proud. Me too. We've uh, anchored in Chichime, which is uh, quite a tight little anchorage. Uh, quite a narrow little gap to get through. But uh, the kids have gone off snorkeling and doing various things. It's funny, um, back in the UK, you know, if the kids went off, you'd say, um, you know, be back before dinner. If you're crossing the roads, watch out for cars. And uh, here you kind of say, don't get run over by a dinghy and watch out for the bull sharks. And it just seems like it's so normal. Uh, Melissa wanted to learn to say the optimist. So we kind of exchange things all the time, I love that. So uh, yeah, we got lots of butter which we ran out of and she got to learn how to sail the Optimist. So uh, Melissa of Chocho is getting taught by Arenka how to sail a small boat and the oppie. So we got the Optimist out. Yes, it was a little bit windy for a beginner. At the speed we're going in this wind, the bow kind of dipped in in the end and we kind of managed to fill the dinghy with water and capsize, but it was all good fun. We managed to ride the dinghy, there was no damage. But it's always difficult on a small boat, it's so receptive, trying to get the boat, you know, just off the wind, without any wind indicators, you know, and get it moving. Uh, but, you know, Melissa got it in the end, she was persistent and she did it. And it was really good fun to be able to do that kind of thing. I want to do more of it, I just, I just want slightly less wind next time. Well, they're just over there, sailing up and down, learning points of sail and a bit of wind awareness. Uh, waffle time. Waffle time on Sunday waffles. Waffle time on Sunday waffles. We got the professional also waffle Sunday. maker over here. Right there. The waffle mix, huh? I did six batches today. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of a lot of waffles. Yeah. <laughs> the waffles on Sunday waffles tasted great. Okay, this morning we are leaving Chichime, which is one of the first islands you approach when you get to the San Blas from the west and we are heading to Shelter Bay but we're stopping in Linton Bay on the way. So today we're heading to Linton Bay, it seems windy but it's actually not going to be that windy, the forecast isn't that that windy, it's kind of like you know between, it's about Beaufort scale 3 so between sort of 11 to 16 knots but maybe gusting a bit more. So yeah we've got to get out of this tricky anchorage because there's reef on either side as you go out and then it's pretty much a straight course just avoiding a few reefs on the way. I found purpose and my life became more clear. So we've got a good sail here. We are we've got one reef in the Genoa, one reef in the main, and we're going at about seven knots or just over. There's quite a lot of swell, about two just over two meter swell. So it's a little bit lumpy, but we're kind of moving quite nice and fast. And the wind's about 16 to 17, 18 knots of wind. Probably true. I've got a wife, two kids, and a picket fence. Everything was hazy, now it's making So we're just heading along the Panamanian coast. Uh, we left the San Blas area now, and then we're slowly going to turn um, into Linton Bay. Uh, our friends on the catamarans, they've found the swell a bit too much, and so they've headed n north around a fish farm, which is kind of one of the navigational hazards in this part of the world. Um, and it's one of those rare occasions where actually it's more comfortable to be on a monohull than a catamaran. We should be there in roughly two hours, I think. Um, so nice little day sail and we'll be anchoring overnight there. We are just arriving in Linton Bay. This is Linton Bay. So the, the shore looks really like jungly now. The trip was pretty good. It's only half past one. So it actually only took us the morning to go all the way from the San Blas to Linton Bay. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna try and find somewhere to anchor now for the night. So thanks to all the adventures we had in the San Blas with our amazing sailing buddies and friends on Chocho, Chinook, the Aloha, and our wonderful friends on Sunday Waffles. Next episode, we sail from the San Blas to Linton Bay and then on to Shelter Bay. Thanks for watching and especially thanks to our patrons who make these videos possible. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to become part of our patron family for less than a cost of a coffee, then follow the link in the description below or put Mothership Adrift Patreon and it will take you to the right place. As deep as the sea, no matter how rough things may come to be, you and me. 
And finally, don't forget to subscribe and also check out our other channel, which is dedicated to fixing your boat called Mothership Maintenance. Hey, you'll always be alright by me, yes, you're alright. Okay, what are you going to do with that head? So